Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Colin Champ back after a several month hiatus. Uh, thanks, everyone, for all the feedback, the constructive criticism. I incorporated all of that in this episode and future episodes to come. So the topic I'm going to discuss today is a topic near and dear to my heart, and this is on cooking oils and cooking fats. This is a topic that I wrote a blog post about several years back. I actually did a whole chapter in my book on this. Um, yet this is still one of the most common questions that I get from you, the listener and reader, and also from my patients. So I'm going to do a real quick video on this. And again, I've already written a blog post on this dedicated to a, a chapter for my book, but this might just be a little more easily accessible for people. So I'll keep it quick. This is what I looked at when I decided what oils I used to cook with. And this hasn't changed for several years. So the first picture I'm going to show you here is this is going to be the most scientific picture of this talk. This is a saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fat. You'll notice that there is a carbon backbone here. There's no C's there. There's just the middle between those H's. Those H's are hydrogens. And basically, as you can see on the saturated uh, carbon backbone here, there's an H bound to each one of those carbons. That means it is saturated. It's saturated by hydrogens. That makes it very stable, solid at room temperature, able to be cooked uh, at slightly higher heat without causing issues, generally speaking. Monounsaturated fats come up next. As you can see, there's two arrows there pointing to one bond. That one is for the mono. Those are unsaturated. There's one area that is not saturated with hydrogens. As we move further to the right there, you see the polyunsaturated fat. This has many arrows pointing to many unbound carbons. It's poly, poly meaning many, unsaturated. There are many unsaturated bonds here. These are areas where free radicals can bind when we do things like storing these fats on the shelf or cooking these fats on the frying pan, which I hope you're not doing too, too high of a heat, but uh, free radicals combine to these areas, making the fats oxidated. So if we look at the stability of cooking oils and fats, this is the first thing I look at. I have a bunch listed here. It shows a percentage of saturated, percentage of monounsaturated, that's MUFA, and the percentage of polyunsaturated, that's PUFA. We want the polyunsaturated to be the least. So as you can see here on the list, the top oils here are macadamia nut oil, coconut oil, lard, uh, ghee, which is clarified butter. You have butter on there as well. Sunflower oil is listed, not one of my favorites. Palm, olive, and avocado oil, as you can see, very low in polyunsaturated fat. Next thing I look at is the shelf life of these oils. So if you let these oils sit on your shelf, will they become oxidized just by sitting there? Uh, at the bottom here, you have some of the walnut oil, sesame oil. In three months, these generally go bad. So odds are, if you buy these at the store, they are already bad. Uh, olive and macadamia, I have at nine months, even though these are, generally speaking, there can be a range. And then coconut palm and avocado oil are generally some of the most shelf-stable oils. When you buy these from the store, especially olive oil, you want to get the nearest harvest date. So if it was harvested several years ago, odds are it's probably bad. Um, I look at smoke point of various oils. Now you should never cook a fatter oil until it's smoking. And one of the ways, well, there's two ways to ensure this. One is to not go to too high of a heat. The second way to assure this is to go to a very stable oil. This is a very busy picture. Um, it's going to come up here on the screen in a second. But as you can see, the highest smoke point is ghee. And again, that's clarified butter. This is what I generally use if I'm cooking meats or other things on the pan. I never cook high heat. I never sizzle and fry things. Um, and when I generally use fats or oils to cook at a higher heat, which again is probably pretty low in general, uh, I use ghee, I use duck fat, I use lard, I use tallow. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of other fats listed. And uh, coconut oil is not too bad either. It's at about 350 degrees. As you'll notice here, a lot, a lot of these high heat oils, um, these are probably recommended to you by other sites like grapeseed oil and almond oil and some of these other refined oils. These are oils that go through intense processing. These are vegetable oils. So they're refined, they're bleached, they're steamed. They do all these different, they, they add detergents. As you think about a corn or even uh, olive, not, not an olive, excuse me, corn or almond or even um, sunflower. There's not a lot of fat in these things. So you have to put corn through intense processing to make the fat. And that in itself pushes it to very high heat, extracts oil out, and it can denature them. So I don't use any vegetable oils to cook with. Uh, another thing is omega-6s. If an oil has a lot of an omega-6 fatty acid, it can be inflammatory. Um, again, these are generally speaking, so I try to avoid 
oils that have very high amounts of omega-6s. And as you can see in this picture, cottonseed, soybean, sesame, all these vegetable oils that I avoid anyway are very high in inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. As you get down to the bottom here, you see macadamia nut oil, coconut oil, even cocoa butter, palm oil, olive oil. These are oils I generally stick with. And just as a bonus picture here, monounsaturated fats are generally anti-inflammatory fats. They're promoted by most health sources. Macadamia oil has quite a high amount, 85%. Olive oil, 75%. Avocado oil, 70%. Tallow actually is 50%. That's beef fat and pork fat is about 40%. So the oils that I cook with, again, are coconut, macadamia nut, avocado, olive oil in low heat, ghee, tallow, lard, and pork fat is mostly stable fats. I never cook at high heat. If I cook in the oven, I generally keep it at 300 to 350 at most. So this is what I do. I hope it helps you. For all those people with questions on this, I hope this answers those questions. Further information, check me out on my website at colinchamp.com. This should be posted on my YouTube page, and you can go to Colin Champ MD on either Twitter or Facebook. Thanks, everyone. I hope this helps, and have a good day.